Hello and welcome. I'm Jamie Kelly with RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group. Today I'm joined by Dr. Lipstein. Um, we're going to be discussing toy safety and some tips for parents and guardians to help make sure toys are age appropriate and that your kids can have um, a fun, safe time while they're playing with them. Jumping right into our first question, um, I think the big question of the day, what should parents or guardians be looking for in terms of um, safety concerns when they're trying to select toys for their child or um, certain at, certainly at the time of year where people are exchanging lots of gifts and presents. Um, so if your child receives something, how do you look at it and say, oh, okay, this is a great toy for them or, oh, this may require a little supervision or we're going to put that off and save it for a year <laughs> or two before we're not going to, you know, we're going to put it in the back of the closet and we'll take it out. Uh, where it's a little bit more age appropriate. <laughs> sure. Sure. So I guess you have two concerns when you're thinking about um, what kind of toy is appropriate for my child. So the first road is the safety question. And the second road is the developmentally appropriate question. So when you're looking at developmentally appropriate toys, um, you can have a little bit more wiggle room with this one because kids will develop at slightly different rates. And so what's appropriate for your three-year-old might be appropriate for someone else's four-year-old or appropriate for somebody else's two-year-old. Uh, and you just need to think, what is my child up to? What are they learning about? Are they a three-year-old who is super into puzzles and they're putting together puzzles with smaller pieces like a 20 or a 40 piece puzzle, or are they still really a three-year-old who's looking to put the shapes into the puzzles mm -hmm. of a six piece puzzle? So that's the developmental road of the question. Um, but I'm really gonna focus more on the safety part of the question. And really, especially with younger kids age five and under, what you're looking for with the safety question is size and shape and uh, electronic components, basically. So the first concern with most toys is what happens if your child puts it in their mouth? Mm -hmm. And so the younger your child is, the fewer, uh, the, the larger you want the pieces to be. So the bigger the pieces are, the, safe, the safer it is. So when you're um, giving a present of Legos to a two or a three-year-old, mm -hmm. you're really looking for those those Duplo Legos that have pieces that are this big. Mm -hmm. If you're giving Legos to a seven-year-old or a 10-year-old, you know, you can go with the complicated sets that have, um, that have smaller pieces. The, the easiest way to sort this out is to look at the recommendation on the box. The recommendations on the box will tell you for, th you know, ages three plus, ages five plus, ages seven plus. Um, if it says, uh, choking hazards, small parts, not for children under the age of three, then that's really a size and shape concern. If you have a set that says like seven plus and it doesn't have any of those things, uh, you want to look at it, you want to make see the size and the shape, and then consider the developmental part of it. Is my older child, you know, ready for this? Um, the other thing that I'm just going to throw in there is please consider the ages of your of the siblings or the other children who are in the house because you could get your 10 year old the coolest lego set ever and if your 2 year old wanders over and picks up that shiny tiny little red thing that's supposed to be the light on the lego car mm -hmm. and and sticks it in their mouth you also have a problem <laughs> so if you're getting presents for older children and they're safety appropriate and developmentally appropriate Either you need to have a strong discussion with that older child about where the best storage is for those toys, um, or maybe reconsider that even though this individual child is old enough for that toy, this house is not quite ready for it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the other thing to, to keep in mind. Um, the other thing I would say in terms of swallowing, choking, things like that is also know your children because we typically tend to think of kids under the age of three as having more trouble with choking hazards, mm -hmm. but four-year-olds put things in their mouth, five-year-olds put things in their mouth. It's just something, something to be aware of in terms of the specific dynamic in your family and um, how much of a concern different types of pieces or sizes of pieces, you know, would be with, with your family. So definitely not a one size fits all approach, right? Like you're saying, it's um, definitely look at recommendations on the box, definitely look at, you know, how your child plays and things like that. But then also consider, you know, like you said, are there other mm -hmm. family members in the household that 
may, uh, you know, it may not be intended for them, but they may have <laughs> access to it. Right. Um, and, you know, so right. definitely being mindful that, you know, like a house is a holistic place, um, you know, as right. much as I'm sure some kids would love to just say, this is, this is mine. Um, right. It doesn't really work out that it way. It doesn't when always got, work that way. No, when that's you've got right. siblings and other little family members and stuff that, that are over often. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a good point to me because I think uh, you get sometimes very stuck on who am I buying this for and not uh, who else has access to it. Right, right. Um, the other safety caution, I guess, that I'll throw out there mm -hmm. is um, you have to think about what types of materials are in the toys that you have. Oh. So, for example, if uh, you have a plastic toy and your child swallows a piece of it, and you're very sure it went down into their stomach as a, mm -hmm. they're not coughing, they're not drooling, they're not mm -hmm. complaining of anything. You're pretty sure it went in and they swallowed it. That small Lego or other small plastic toy, chances are is going to come right out the other end, you know, over time. Yes. But there are two categories of toys or toy components that are very dangerous if they're swallowed. And so you have to be particularly mindful. And those two things are batteries and magnets. So if you have a child of any age who swallows more than one magnet, that's a reason to go to the emergency room, oh, okay. uh, particularly high powered magnets. Mm -hmm. So there was a trend recently of um, like these uh, decorative items or paperweights mm -hmm. that are like very high powered, small magnetized balls that you can change the shape and you can maneuver them. Oh. And those are extremely dangerous in the hands of a small child. <laughs> if you get two of those magnetized beads in their stomach or their intestines, they mm -hmm. can have a lot of difficulties and, and complications. Um, so magnets are a reason to go to the emergency room if they're swallowed. And then batteries are the other, you know, the other uh, category of things that are mm -hmm. also very dangerous, particularly like the, the button batteries or the lithium ion batteries. The small uh, round ones. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So number one, they're easy to swallow. <laughs> they look like candy um, and they just, they degrade in the acidic environment of the mm -hmm. stomach. And so that can be problematic, but really, even if they swallowed like one of the long skinny ones, I would still be um, hesitant, you know, about yes. that. So those are the, those are really the two things that you want to be very, very careful about. So any toys that you buy that are electronic mm -hmm. have batteries in it. You really want to make sure that the panel that uh, houses the battery is mm -hmm. screwed in tightly. So you don't want anything that you can just slide off or shift around and then you have access to the batteries. It mm -hmm. has to have a screw that you can screw in and it's sealed all the way so that your adventurous three-year-old cannot get in there. And you also want to reinforce that with your older kids who mm -hmm. maybe are changing the batteries on their own, <laughs> that yes. if batteries back in the old batteries have to be disposed of in a safe way and mm -hmm. the new batteries have to be put in and sealed and screwed in really tightly with the screwdriver so that no younger kids can get in there and and pull out the batteries very good advice and i think especially because so many electronic toys are um popular now um, mm -hmm. Even if it's not very, very little older kids, so many fun electronics out there. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, it's very easy with those little batteries. Um, mm -hmm. I myself have a bad habit of just losing those little batteries. <laughs> when I buy them, they come in like a set or two or three and I replace the one right. I need. And because they're so small, they get like lost at the bottom of a drawer. So mm -hmm. um, definitely something a smaller child could probably easily find mm -hmm. um, if not properly secured. Um, is there besides... Um, like those types of materials. Is there any other material? Like I'm just wondering about like glittery, fluffy, anything like that, that parents need to be concerned with as well? Or is that more just, you know, like don't let them chew on it kind of a thing? Right, 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 right. So um, most other materials, once they get past your esophagus, mm -hmm are usually okay coming out. But of course, if you have any questions about did my child, did my not my child mm -hmm. not swallow, I'm not sure. I would call either call your pediatrician or depending on what was, you could also call poison control. Mm -hmm. They're a good resource to have all the time. There are some things that are a little bit more tricky uh, at the top, right? So mm -hmm. if you think about like a balloon, so if you have a small child who's trying to blow up a balloon, mm -hmm. that's a thin plastic. So if they 
inhale too much as opposed to exhaling too mm -hmm. much, that thin plastic could get in their airway and, and block things up a little bit. So you want to be careful with anything like that, um, that consistency or maybe a fluffy kind of material or something that just would, would get a little bit more stuck and could block things up at the top. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing uh, is... So something that's very small, chances are, is going to go straight down. But something that is just the wrong size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think about like a golf ball size. Or I think that the, um, the, the classic measurement tool, I guess, is if you have like a toilet paper roll mm -hmm. and you can fit the toy inside it and it goes oh. through, then it has the potential, especially in a younger child, to, if they put it in their mouth, to obstruct their airway. Uh, mm -hmm. if it, you know, if it gets in, um, and that obviously could be problematic if it's big enough that it can't go through the toilet paper roll, <laughs> then, then you're fine. It'll get in their mouth. They'll chew on it. They it's too big for them to, yes. you know, for them to do anything with it. So, um, that's, that's sort of a good rule of thumb. Or if you want to measure, is this ball or other toy, you know, mm -hmm. that somebody got for my child too, too small for them to safely play with, if they put it in their mouth, mm -hmm. that's a good way to uh, to gauge the the size. It's a good rule of thumb too, because I I would say that most, if not all, households have a roll of toilet paper. Right. So it's, right. a, it's a handy tool. Exactly, exactly. It's an easily available uh, measurement mm -hmm. tool. So. Um, now, in terms of, do you have any types of toys that you caution parents against either buying for their parents or guardians from buying for their children or, you know, having them play with um, if they get it as a gift or um, is that maybe more just going back to like that age appropriate conversation? So I think a lot of it is age appropriate, mm -hmm. but I will say also things that are electronic toys do also have the potential if they overheat to cause burns. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to be careful with those also. Uh, I think I would maybe flip the question a little bit, mm -hmm. which is to tell you that I would strongly encourage parents to consider buying non-electronic toys for their younger children. Mm -hmm. And there's two reasons for that. One is, as we discussed some of the other issues, the electronic toys between the batteries and the burns and mm -hmm. things like that um, have some more safety questions than the non-electronic toys. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that our kids are exposed to so much in the way of electronics these days, and they will figure out how to push the buttons and make the noises and play the mm -hmm. games. Absolutely. But younger kids, toddlers and young preschool age kids have this window of opportunity where their mind works in such a way that they really develop um, beautifully with pieces of their physical environment. And mm -hmm. so if you have a toddler who is able to physically stack blocks on top of each other or play with a, a, a game that they can take the shapes and sort them into different mm -hmm categories or have the doll and the carriage or the grocery cart that they can push around. Developmentally, those are very appropriate for your younger kids. And so you want to give them the opportunity to explore their physical environment and manipulate their physical environment. Mm -hmm. And so I would take this opportunity when you're getting them toys uh, to give them things that they can physically hold and move around and also things that give them a blank slate. So they're able to build whatever they want out of those mm -hmm. blocks. It's not something that's very structured. And there'll be plenty of time for them when they're later to do things like building um, building a house on, a, on an electronic game, you know, or mm -hmm. something like that. They'll, they'll figure it out. But when you're looking at presents for younger kids, you really want to try to find those physical things that they can hold and move and build on their own and use their imagination. I like ending on this like creative sort of positive <laughs> note because <laughs> I know sometimes it can be a little um, a little daunting and a little scary when you hear about the things you should be worried about. Um, right. But I, yeah, I think that there's lots of great um, alternatives to electronic toys, like you were saying that, um, you know, give kids like a beautiful window to, to explore their creativity. Um, that that was all of the questions I had. Was there anything you wanted, any other uh, tips you had for uh, parents or guardian or any other pieces of advice um, for anyone who's got a young or like a middle-ish age child where they're sort of right on that. They should be okay, but I'm not sure sort of mm -hmm. age, you know, like that five to eight, we'll say. Um, right. 
any other advice you want to give them? I mean, we covered, we did cover a lot of advice early on, so it's okay. Right. No, I mean, I think what I would say is if you're buying presents for somebody else, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask their parents. Yeah. Um, and this is both, what is your child up to? You know, mm -hmm. do, does your three-year-old love to do puzzles? Or is your three-year-old not up to it, you know, yet, as mm -hmm. I mentioned before. Uh, but also some parents are like, listen, I don't want another doll that sings a song. I, you know, like it's just over and over and over again. Can mm -hmm. you please buy her the doll that doesn't, you know, or something yeah. like that? Or she already has three dolls. Can you get her the carriage, you know, mm -hmm. instead? So um, so don't be afraid to ask the parent. And I, I guess I would say if you're not sure if a if a present is safe for the age of your child, my instinct would be to err on not getting it. Mm -hmm. um, just or, you know, just to be careful because you don't want too many small pieces hanging around. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always save it for next year, you know, when they're yeah. a little older and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and able to and able to manage the, the smaller pieces a little bit better. So excellent. Yeah, there's always next year. Um, right. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lipstein, for, for joining sure. us and talking about this topic today. Um, thank you all for joining us also and for watching the replay. I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Great. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Have a good day.